your argument is that workers today would be worse off without globalization. Right. Globalization brings benefits. Globalization um, brings costs. I talked about um, some of those benefits. When James and I talk about it being small, we're not saying it's a small cost. We're saying some of the costs that people identify are relatively small. To give a sense of how you could do, measure that, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics used to do a survey every year of how many mass layoffs companies conducted. And they went and figured out the reasons why companies conducted those layoffs. They found that 3% of them were because of trade, because they'd moved jobs overseas, because they had closed because of trade. Now, if that was the only thing that trade did, and trade was 3% of the mass layoff problem and there was nothing else to trade, then we would join um, the other side. But our point is that when you're talking about the downsides, that's on the downside. That's one way of quantifying it. To do that upside downside again, um, there is a, the study by um, David Otter et al. that Jared cited, excellent economist, 2.4 million manufacturing jobs lost to China from 1999 to 2011. The way they did that study was they looked at local areas and figured out which areas got more imports. And the ones that got more imports lost jobs. Another economist, the head of the National Bureau of Economic Research trade program, organizations Thea used to be on the board of, used that exact same thing, but he looked at local areas that increased exports and asked what happened to jobs there. And then he added up the two, and you came out 700,000 jobs ahead. That's labor demand. Other stuff is going on in monetary policy because of trade. So absolutely, 2.4 million jobs lost to imports to China. At the same time, many million more created due to US exports elsewhere. After all, when we opened up China's market, okay. the air imports went up 886%. Let's, let's let your opponents respond to some of what you're saying. There are clearly benefits to global trade. There are clearly benefits to global trade for everybody who takes their wallet out and goes shopping in whatever class you're in. And that's why I object to the opposition's use of this counterfactual, this other world, where there's no trade at all. It's like somehow the idea is that uh, either trade is undermining the working class, or if there were no trade, everybody would be worse off. That's not our point. Our point is that under the trade regime that Thea described in her opening statement, we have undermined the working class such that their bargaining power, their compensation, their democratic voice has been damaged. It's not the only thing that's damaged them. And by the way, I think it was James a minute ago said, you know, it's not 90%. Nothing is 90%. You can't find any economic causal factor that gets you above 15 or 20% in any of this debate. So that's a red herring. Globalization as implemented in the US is one important factor undermining the well-being of okay, the global